Amen, amen. We're turning our Bibles again to the book of Ephesians. Let's turn to the New Testament book of Ephesians as we begin a study tonight in the Word of God. We're looking at the book of Ephesians as we look at a very important spiritual message tonight called Finding Peace with God. Finding Peace with God. The second chapter of Ephesians. <coughs> Pardon me. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians, the second chapter, beginning with verse 1. Ephesians 2 and verse 1. How shall a man find peace with God? How shall a man be made right with God? We like to examine through the scriptures not only a message for those who are in the church, attend churches, but seem to have lost that peace once held with God, but also those that have never obtained to that peace. We want to understand how that is possible by examining the scriptures and then the scriptures speak to us this evening. Look at a certain class here in Ephesians 2 verses 1 through 6. Ephesians 2 verses 1 through 6. Again our topic, finding peace with God. The Bible says to a certain class in verse 1, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Those are past tense. Were dead in trespasses and sins. Wherein, again, time. Time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, of whom, among whom also we had, that's past tense again, had our conversation in times past, in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the designs of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others, two classes, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us, made us alive, quickened us, together with Christ, by grace are ye saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Brothers, this is the experience of those who have had forgiveness of sins. But many hath he quickened. Many in times past were among those who had got victory over the lust of the flesh and the desires of the flesh. And there are many who are in the church but yet struggling and not finding that great peace with God. As a matter of fact, some would say, well, is everyone in the church struggling? Not everyone. But even when we talk about everyone in the church also, and we turn to Romans chapter 3, there is in the flesh itself nothing good. Yet, the Bible speaks of, even though there's none good, not one righteous in the true sense without the righteousness of Christ, yet, brothers and sisters, there are some that have never known peace and have never known or had access to the way of peace. In Romans chapter 3, notice this scripture. Romans 3, looking at verse 10 through 18. Let's examine this. Romans 10 verses, or Romans 3, pardon me. Romans 3, verses 10 through 18. Let's notice verse 10 and drop our eyes down through this. Romans 10, sorry, I can see what I'm saying. Romans 10. Romans 3 and verse 10. I beg your pardon. In Romans 3, 10 it says, As it is written, there is how much? None there is none righteous, no, not one. Because we told that righteousness is by faith in Christ. It says again in verse 10, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. Verse 12. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. That means a grave. With their tongues they have used the seed. The poison of serpents, asps, is under their lips whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness, their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. Mm -hmm. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Our topic again is finding peace with God. These individuals here spoken of, it says the way of peace have they not known. No. And brothers and sisters, we look at this idea of those both within and without, those that have no idea, no way, no, no hope, no light, and those that have had, had light, had op access to it, but have seeming to lost this one time peace with God. We want to examine this concept tonight of finding peace 
We're gone. So let's start with a text that we all know. We should all know this. Many of us memorize this text, even though we not know, may not know where it is. In the 26th chapter of Isaiah, and verse 3, knows a scripture that most all know, and most all believe, but most aren't feeling or experiencing on a spiritual basis today. In the 26th chapter of Isaiah, Isaiah 26. Look at Isaiah 26 and verse 3. Let's put a text to our minds that we should already have there. In verse 3 of Isaiah 26 it says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he But Romans said that is not our condition. That's not the condition of any. None seek it after God. None love God. None desire God. And how can the Bible say I will keep him in perfect peace because his mind is stayed upon me or whose mind is stayed upon me when the scripture says none has their mind stayed upon Christ. Here seems to be a great mystery, but it's simple to understand if you understand the scriptures. And also, if you're going to be encouraged by the scriptures tonight to see that there is a way of peace, and it can be known, and there are people who can keep their mind stayed on thee because of something. He said, because he does what? What's the last part say? Trusted. He trusted in thee. And that word trust is another word for faith. faith. Because of his faith in thee. He, is he righteous? No, not one. But because of his faith in thee, his faith obtained something for him by which he can not only have peace, but have his mind stayed on thee that he might obtain and keep this peace. Now shall keep his mind, keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because, and only because, he trusteth in thee. The. Now, the brothers and sisters, again, let's uh, understand the fact. Let's make it clear to our mind that this idea of trusting is a work of, idea of, a truth of faith. The Bible teaches, again, in the book of Romans, look at Romans 15, we're talking about finding peace with God. It is possible. The way of peace can be known. And look at Isaiah, uh, sorry, Romans, let's read Isaiah alone and go to Romans. And Romans 15, it says this. Romans, the 15th chapter, again, Paul says it's most definitely known that we can obtain peace, but it comes through faith. It comes through believing in the word of God. Are we in the book of Romans? Amen. I'm not. Let me turn and see if I can find that. Romans, Romans 15. Romans, the 15th chapter. Look at Romans 15 and verse 13. In Romans 15 and verse 13. Say amen when you have that. Amen. Romans 15 and verse 13, it says, and again, Isaiah says, there, I'm sorry, that's the wrong text. Verse 13, next text. It says, now the whole God of hope, are we there? Amen. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and what? Peace. Look at the next part. Peace in believing. Stop right there. You saw that? Amen. Again, let's read it. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. What's the key phrase here? Believe. In believing. Again, it says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and give you, fill you with peace in, by means of faith, believing. That you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. So how will we obtain this peace? Through the power of the Holy Ghost. But by how do we appropriate? How do we lay hold upon this divine power? In believing that the God of hope may do this work in us and that we may be able to keep our minds stayed upon him because we trust in him, because we believe in him. This keeping the mind is obviously the work of the Holy Spirit. It's obviously the work of the Spirit of God, a divine Helper, God, counselor, teacher, a power in man, just as Christ was a power upon the earth to guide us into all truth. The word of God teaches us that it's in believing that we're able to obtain this faith or the God of hope can fill us with peace. How many want to be filled with peace tonight? Amen. How many are in need of peace? The whole world is in need of peace and there are many who are struggling with fear and depression and sadness, even they're lacking or desiring a greater experience with God and can't seem to obtain it because they have not, they're not exercising or know how to exercise faith or belief in Him. The Bible says in John chapter 1, now you know, talking about believing in Him, amen? amen? Faith in Him. In John 1 it says, in the beginning was the Word. Let's turn there. In the beginning was the Word. 
And the Word was with God. And the Word what? Was God. The same was in the beginning of God. It says all things were made by Him, the Word, and not anything that was made without Him. This is the Word, right? In Him was life. And the life was the? Look at verse 11. John 1, 11. He came unto His own, and His own did what? His own received Him not. Verse 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that did what? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. That sounds like something we just read in the book of Romans. Because by believing in him, in believing we have access to this God of hope and be filled with this grace and we're able to do this, the power of the Holy Spirit. It says, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that received him? Because this believing is how we receive it. We find in Romans 15, it's by believing or having faith that we receive the Holy Spirit. Here again it says, by believing we receive power to become sons, to become grafted into this family. It's the same experience. Verse 13 says, it's also a new birth, which was born not of the blood of man, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but being born of God. a new birth or being born of God. Verse 14 says that word was made flesh. What word was made flesh that was with God and is God and created the whole world? It's Christ. By believing on Christ and receiving him or believing on him as he has been shown to us in the scriptures and as he has given himself and re received the power of God and shown himself to be a savior for all mankind by, as Romans, sorry, Revelation 1 says, by hearing this word and by reading this word, there are blessings for us, even the blessing of peace. Because as we receive this gift, the Bible says God so loved the world. That's John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave this word made flesh that if we would believe upon him, we could receive this power. By believing upon him, we could receive the Holy Spirit to give us this new birth, this new experience, and by it, our minds could be stayed upon him. We could be kept in what kind of peace? Perfect peace. We could enter into the way of peace. We could be even, the Bible says, filled with peace. And why would believing on Christ, why would believing on this son cause to have this peace? Let's look at the text. Isaiah. Isaiah the ninth chapter. Look at Isaiah 9. Isaiah the ninth chapter. Look at verse 6 and 7. Isaiah 9, verse 6 and 7. Why would receiving or believing on Jesus Christ or the Son of God give us, fill us with, guide us in, convert us through peace? Isaiah 9. Isaiah 9, look at verse 6 and 7. Isaiah 9, verse 6 and 7. You know this text. Isaiah 9, verse 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born. Unto who? Us. Unto us. It's Christ was given unto us. He has never left the flesh. He will be in humanity forever. He was given, not borrowed, he was given. He was given unto humanity forever to be one with us and to be a father, a wonderful father as it were. It says in verse six, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting what? Father, also the Prince of? Peace. The Prince of Peace. This is why we receive peace. You say, well, him being a prince has nothing to do with me. Him being a prince has nothing to do with me having peace. He has peace, but how would I have it? Look at the next text. It says, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. The increase of his government or the increase upon those who are part of his government, those who are citizens, and of peace there is no end. The work of the Holy Spirit that he's able to do in the kingdom citizens or the increase of his government, there is no end. If America stopped having children and started having, stopped having immigration, uh oh, there'd be an end of our government. There'd be no increase. By adding citizens, your government and your kingdom increases. The Bible says the end there shall be no end. And the, the Bible says that there is going to be a prince of peace, a son given unto us, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, a Father of Son to the Holy Spirit, and the Prince of Peace who is increasing his government, putting it on his shoulder, and increasing peace with no end. I'm getting encouraged already. 
I think there may be a, a way that we can find peace. We can be filled with peace. We can be able to be led into the ways of peace that we can understand how you and I, though we may be shaky in our faith, we may have doubt, we may have sadness tonight, we may have discouragement, something may have happened that even though Jesus says in the world you have tribulation, it's hard to deal with. But the Bible says that we can have an increase of peace. The Prince of Peace could be ours. If we believe upon him, the Bible says by believing in him, it, through belief, we can be filled with peace in the midst of the storm that trouble our lives. But how again shall we obtain it? Again, remember for those taking notes, believing in Christ, we receive power through the Holy Spirit. Believing in Christ, we have what? Power through the Holy Spirit. It is based upon believing. Believing. That's why Romans 1 says we must hear the word and read. Blessed are those that hear and read and keep these words. That's Revelation chapter 1. And by reading the word that was made flesh and by examining, allowing those words to be in you, by allowing those promises to be taken as yours because you are in need. If any man sin, you have an advocate with the Father, the Bible says. You need that word. The Bible says if any man believe on the Son, he has life indeed. You need that word. You, the Bible says if any man come unto me, I will in no wise cast out. You need those words. And by those very words and by many other witnesses can we see Christ as a living Savior and be living in him. Be filled with peace. Receive a spiritual endowment even a power of God, making us sons by the will of God. Now in Isaiah, let's make it a little bit more clear application here. In Isaiah 27, notice this text. Because again, we see that by believing, even though we are without power, we receive power. Oh, what's another word, in there for, another word for power? Strength. We were saying, in other words, we might be full of weakness, we may feel weak, we may feel sad, we may feel down, but we can obtain a supernatural endowment that gives us peace and power and strength. And the Bible says it's not our own power. We must lean upon God, and in leaning upon Him, leaning upon His Word, believing His Word, we can receive power. Isaiah said to put it this way. Look at Isaiah 27. Isaiah 27 chapter. Isaiah 27, looking at verse 5. Isaiah 27 and verse 5. Look at this powerful piece of scripture. Isaiah 27. Isaiah 27 and verse 5. Notice the word of God. Let's see if we can find some peace tonight. Isaiah 27 and verse 5. The Bible says this. It says, Or let him, are we there? Or let him take hold of my strength that he may make peace with me and he shall make peace. Peace with me. What a definite statement. And also it shows us the peace is not in only saying, hey, well, I'll get my life right. Some no, no, no. It says, let him take hold of my strength. We find that it's through faith. If it was through intellect, boy, I'd be in trouble. If it was through physical strength, I'd be in trouble. If it was through money and wealth, I'd be in trouble. But it's by faith. As your faith beat unto you, Jesus said, right? It says, verse 5, let him, let him, it's your choice, let him take hold of my strength that he may make peace with me. You want to make peace with me, but you have nothing to bring, nothing to offer, nothing to cause me to change my mind and turn away. You have nothing except belief in Christ. Well, take hold of my strength. Take hold of my word. Take hold of the Son of God. Take hold of the Bible. Take hold of these promises and believe and receive them. And by taking hold of my strength, you can make peace with me and ye shall make peace with me. And the very God of hope may fill you with all peace through the Holy Spirit. It's all by believing in the word. So shall we not read the Bible? Shall we not take time in the Bible? Shall we not even examine these promises where we can obtain peace? Again, we're, we're going further in the script. Look at Romans again. Let's go back to Romans. Let's go back to Paul. In Romans 5, notice how Paul puts it this way. Again, we'll examine it one more time before we close this down. Romans 5. Romans 5. Finding peace with God. In Romans 5, notice how Paul puts it this way. This seems like some big theology, but it's not. It's very simple. Romans 5. Let's read verse 5. Sorry, Romans 5, verse 1. Let's just read verse, verse 1. That's that. 
Let well, me we, we read it down a little bit. We read a little bit down there. Let's begin in verse 1. Romans 5, verse 1. It says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. Let's break this down very simply. Amen. What's the first part of the word justify? Just. just. Now, <clears throat> just is where we get the word justice. And justice means to be fair, mm -hmm. equitable, and right. Mm -hmm. Correct? Mm -hmm. Someone comes and knocks you over the head and the police looks around and says, well, that's your problem. Is that justice? No. Is that fair? Oh, no. Justice is fairness. It's equitableness. It's being right. Righteousness. Mm -hmm. To be justified means to be made right. To be made fair. To be made true. To be made especially right. Being justified. God is able to make us right. To account us as right, but also to make us right. So not only to look at us as being right because we chosen him, but also by grace, by knowledge, by power, to make us right. God not only covers our sins, but he gives us power over sin. It's a twofold work. So it says here, being therefore, or therefore being justified, by works, by, faith. by believing, we receive power. When God accepts us and we're made right. We receive this strength and power that we're able to lean upon or receive this faith or this power and make peace with God and also be seen as right and to receive power to become the sons of God and to be a new creature in Christ, to take away guilt and fear. This is being justified. Justified by faith or being, in other words, being made right as opposed to being wrong, right as opposed to being evil, being right by faith or righteous by faith. Justification or being justified by faith is the same as righteousness by faith. It's the same thing. So again, it would say this, being therefore made righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because we've made peace with Him because we've lent upon His strength and received peace with God. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we fall. Stand. Oh, this is, this is enabling, strengthening grace. It, able to, not, it, just, it just, not only just makes us look right, it also causes us to be able to do right and stand. It says... And rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations, also knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope make another shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. So we have love and peace. Brothers, when the, work, the work of the Holy Spirit is to shed abroad this love in our hearts, which also is the peace of God in our hearts. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. How does it come? By faith. And we're justified by faith or made right by faith. Justification by faith, righteous by faith, it's the same thing. It's being made just or right by God. It's a divine work that God does if we, by examining the gospel, by looking and reading and hearing the words of the book of this prophecy, by examining the scripture and being persuaded that these things are so, holding these promises being valid, by looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, we're able to find this justification, stand, and also receive this shedding abroad, this outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the love of God. This is an experience that we all need. This is an experience of grace. And this is, by the way, a way that we find peace with God. Now, again, the scriptures are so interesting because this idea of justification by faith causing us to be or have peace with God is the very same work of righteousness by faith. And Hebrews 11 said that, that Moses, sorry, Noah became an heir of righteousness by faith. So in this word of wickedness, he made peace with God. But even more than that, when we have this experience by faith, this experience has an effect. It has visible, tangible 
result. You might say this peace is just legal. In other words, if someone goes down to the courthouse and pays my traffic ticket, then I have nothing to worry about with the cops that are out there because there's nothing on the computer to stop me and put me in jail. I have peace with the state. Now, do I feel that peace? Maybe not. Can I see it? But someone did it for me and hey, it's there, it's been taken care of and I am free as far as I know I'm free. I may not see any results of it. I may be driving around, let's look at the record and see that's not there. But we're not talking about legal righteousness or legal justification that's just in the records of heaven. We're talking about the fact that there's an effect that we can see even by which verse 2 and 3 says, we stand and have power through the Holy Spirit. Uh, in the book of, look at Isaiah 32. Isaiah 32 says there's an effect of this justification or this righteousness. Isaiah 32. Oh, brother and sister, can, do you want to see some evidence of peace? Now remember the Bible says in the world you should have tribulations. So we're going to have tribulations in the world and we're going to find in the world there will be difficulties. But what will we have in our heart, in our mind? Peace. We'll have the love of God. We'll have a response that comes from within and not from without. See, road rage comes from without. Someone cuts in front of you or pulls out of the driveway and you're coming 60 miles per hour, pulls out at 10 miles per hour like someone did today. God bless you. That what you said? That, that's not what I said. I didn't say anything. I said, Lord, have mercy. Jesus, take the wheel. 10 miles per hour. I mean, I could have crashed. But again, we have to allow the peace of God to reign in our hearts. It's a choice. Let him, let him take hold of my strength. That he may make peace with me. And he shall. You must choose it every day, continually. Isaiah 32 puts it this way. Look at Isaiah 32. There's an effect. It definitely can be seen in your life. Isaiah 32. What verse are we looking for? I didn't say it, did I? Verse 17. Notice this. Isaiah 32, 17. Isaiah 32, 17 says this. And the work of righteousness shall be what? Peace. Oh, so righteousness has a work? Amen. Now we have righteousness by faith because we believe in Christ. But that righteousness by faith works in us both the will and do of his pleasure. Amen? It has a definite output. It has a definite evidence. Because the work of righteousness shall be peace and the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. So people may curse you, but guess what you have inside? Quietness and assurance forever. People may say things that are evil or say things about you or, or have evil things to say concerning you against your character. But what do you have within? Peace, quietness, assurance forever because there is a work of righteousness and there is an effect of righteousness. And we should see this in us. We can have this in us because the very God of hope can fill us with all peace in believing. If only we take the Bible and study the Word of God. If only we take time with the Word and not just read the Bible and say, okay, Jesus, let me this I know, but think and meditate that this Word is true unto me. And Lord, I receive this Word. Create in me a clean heart. That's Psalms, right? Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not the Holy Spirit from me based upon these words. Fulfill these words in me. Let this Word be in me as it also rests in his word through Christ Jesus. These types of sentiments placed in the study of the word cause the word to be bread and water unto you. Cause the power of the Spirit of God to cause you to believe upon Christ and thereby receive Christ, have power, become the sons of God, and be filled with peace. As we look at the word of God, let's look at one last text as we close this scripture. The, the peace of God we found oh, a few texts ago was through the Holy Ghost, right? Look at the book of uh, Luke. Look at Luke as we close. This is our last text, Luke 4. In Luke 4, the Bible shows that when Jesus received the Spirit of God, it had a definite effect upon him. He said it. And this same effect will be seen to some degree in those today who are receiving the Holy Spirit, who are receiving that power, who believe upon him and receive his grace and grace for grace, 
they will receive these evidences in their mortal bodies because they have believed upon him and they receive his power taking hold of his strength what type of power what type of strength did Jesus have through the Holy Spirit that we also will have that will have this work and this effect with quietness assurance and peace as we do the work of God look at Luke 4 Luke 4 verse 18 look at the power the peace the strength that God has that he wants to take hold of with quietness and assurance it's not just being being nice and humble inside it's having power and deliverance outside in verse 18 it says this look, look at four, Luke 4 18 in Luke 4 18 it says the Spirit of the Lord is on, upon me because why did I stop there in other words there's some evidence there's some work of righteousness there's an effect of righteousness amen not just quietness and peace within but even outwardly there is the evidence that we have and we're finding peace with God it said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor does everyone preach the same anointing no but everyone that has received the Spirit and received and taken hold of his strength and have made peace with him well have something to say about it it says he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted not everyone has the same anointed to minister to those that are brokenhearted or sad or in need but if someone has had their heart healed and mended by God that has something to say about it that has some divine assistance the Bible says that God will give you both a mouth and wisdom that none of your enemies can gainsay he will put the words in your mouth you will know how to speak a word in season to those that are weary will everyone have the same anointing to do it no but you have something to say you will be able to teach transgressors thy ways and sinners be converted unto thee because the effect of the Spirit. For those that are finding peace with God, it says also to preach deliverance to the captives. Some people are bowed down with vices and sins. They can't seem to shake. And even though you are only flesh yourselves, you can share with them definite promises and pray with power and intercede for them. Put an arm around them. Cry with them. Laugh with them console with them and by showing forth the effect of peace in your own heart you can lead a soul to believe upon the power they see in you let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven for those of course who are finding peace with God the people around you will find deliverance it says also recovering a sight to the blind. Now, brothers and sisters, this is a sermon unto itself. Recovering of sight to the blind. The third chapter of Revelation talks about the last church upon the earth. And they are what? Blind. And the Bible says that there must be an individual, a people, in the spirit and power of Elias to come and bring sight and recovering of sight to the blind. That especially those in the church at this time can receive a spiritual discerning of who and where they are. They're standing with God. And by God's grace, through confession of sin and repentance and consecration, they can find peace with God before the close of probation. It starts off, ends off saying this, to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord many find themselves brothers and sisters bruised by the difficulties of lives brothers and sisters by bad relationships jobs they don't like children going astray money problems health problems social problems political problems problems to the left problems to the, all types of problems in their body without their body all types of problems exist and all types of problems that we'll have to go through in this life and brothers and sisters the Bible says that we will be coming across people that are bruised that need to have the healing power of God and we must be able to preach the acceptable year of the Lord an acceptable time to accept the Lord and the Bible tells us especially for those who know the prophecies that we're in a time now when the Bible says the mystery of God should be finished. And there's still an acceptable time, acceptable year of the Lord that's coming rapidly to a close and we should be able by prophetic lines and also by gospel lines to lead people into an understanding of the gospel before it's forever too late. That we could have those beautiful feet, Isaiah speaks of, upon the mountains publishing the gospel of peace, 
Why? Because the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The mountains of Zion, brothers and sisters, are before us. The harvest is ready. But where are those who are finding peace with God? Tonight, let us be among those that take the word and not only have the word, but believe every word that cometh out of the mouth of God and that live by every word. In other words, we believe it. We believe this word can cleanse and heal us. It can strengthen us and that we take this word serious. And as we believe it and through belief, we receive the power. Because by believing upon the word, the naked word, and the word would do exactly what it says it would do, by itself, we are taking hold of God's strength. And we will not only receive strength, we will receive peace with God. There's no other way. There's, the first two texts we read show there's no other way to find peace with God because there is none righteous and none seeketh after God. None can stay his mind upon God without divine help. Without the power and mercy of God, Satan's argument is true. You ever thought about that? Without the love, if God had no mercy, no love, Satan's argument would be true. Satan's argument does not see, nor can it fathom the love of God, that God would send his son to die for us. Some of us have experienced the loss of a loved one. Brothers and sisters, mothers, fathers, and we know the depth of love. And some would even question and say, even though death is very common in this life, and all will see death in some way, some would even be tempted to say, why would God allow this to happen to me, or this to happen to her? My sister was handicapped from a child. Never did anything to anyone. To think that she would lie in the bed and basically strangle on her own fluids in her lungs? Did she deserve that? Did she deserve that? What sin did she do to deserve that? Was she paying for her sins? But guess what? When I don't understand something and it seems hard for me to understand, even though the result if she would have lived would have been much more pain and suffering, I could have been clouded that and I could have doubted God. But when I look at Calvary, I see that God so loved the world that he gave his son to humiliation, pain, suffering, and torture, and rejection, and the death of the cross to liberate me and everyone from sin. I have no excuse, no reason to argue with God. He has lost everything that we can have everything. And what could, I, what could I give as an argument against God when he given his own son, not by happenstance or by uncontrollable circumstances, he chose to give his son. And his son chose in the Garden of Gethsemane to go all the way and drink the cup. And this angelic host chose to not intercede and to break it up. The Holy Spirit chose to work in those that receive it. The last choice is ours for those who will find peace with God. Has God done anything but shown mercy and love? Tonight we can accept his love. We can find that way of peace if we would just believe that Jesus came and died for us. This whole world has been changed by Jesus Christ. This whole world. Time was split in two. B.C. A.D. by Christ. The whole concept of love and mercy and justice seen even in laws in the western world and going to the whole world came through the gospel came through the gospel came through the protestant reformation brothers and sisters the word of god has changed the entire world for good though there have been many powers of taking the bible to try and use it for evil and the word of god has given the people a message to show the difference between good and evil the righteous and true principles and movements of God and those that are false prophets. But who can give this message a right without finding peace with God? Tonight, if you'd like to find peace with God through the Holy Spirit, if you'd like to join me in searching daily in the scriptures and believing daily in scriptures for this peace, pray with me this prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, we would find peace with God tonight. We would be justified by faith 
and find peace with God. We would be filled with joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray that you would bless us with the blessing of Revelation. Revelation 1 says there's a blessing for those that hear and read and keep this word. This word testifies of you, you said in John 6. Lord, this testimony, give it unto us. Testimony. Those that testify, you said, would even have power. Revelation 11. You would give power unto your two witnesses. Give the Old New Testament power to us. Strengthen us. Heal us of our diseases. Lord, those that are brokenhearted tonight, we pray that you would give them power. You would deliver them. You would give them healing in their heart. That they would find peace with God. Those that are captive by evil habits. That they can't seem to break smoking, drinking, and addiction to prescription and illicit drugs. We pray that you would give deliverance tonight. And they would walk in faith Tonight, we pray that you would open up the windows of heaven, showing us an acceptable hour tonight. Heal, strengthen, transform, deliver, and cause us to walk upon the high places of the earth in faith. We ask, we pray, and for the forgiveness of sin, Lord, we believe. Help thou our unbelief. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.